Okay, so again, right now, we've already covered over the last two weeks our configuration and setup. And I'm using the green color. I don't like that one. I'm going to change that one so it's better visible, at least for my, uh, myself, because I am colorblind. It's easier for me to see a different color. Um, so uh, we've already uh, finished our configuration and setup. Um, we have gone into and started building uh, the skeleton of an app within the app manager. Now we're going into, we're going to concentrate primarily today on our object manager. Really not going to touch too much on the Lightning app builder. We have talked about that previously. Um, quick question. What does, see, see who can remember anything. What does the Lightning app builder do? You build your app in there. Okay, now, so remember, so uh, this is where sometimes we get things confused here. So we have uh, a few things that have app in it, right? So we have our app, app. menu, right? App manager. App manager. Mm. What else is there? App we have our, our app builder. What else is there? App exchange. Okay, our app. Okay, so there's an app exchange, but how do we get to the app exchange? App launcher. App launcher. Okay. And then um, let's see here. If I remember, I thought there was five of them. Um, uh, menu, manager, builder, launcher. Um, okay, so real quick, as since we were looking at these right here, what does the app menu do? App menu gives us what? Visibility. So when we go into our user interface and we look at our app menu for the whole entire organization, okay. that gives us our visibility. Okay. What apps do you want the users to see as an org? Okay, now remember, this is organization wide. Okay, at the organization wide. App launcher, what does it do? You, you, displays the you full can, range of uh, apps available to you. Exactly, and then Adnan, you also said it? Yeah, I was gonna say the same thing, that you can access yeah. the apps, all the apps you yep. have available. So we'll put, app access, right? And then also app, um, app exchange, okay? So then we have our app manager. What does the app manager do? That's where you manage the app layouts and uh, tab, right? So we build apps. And then we could say slash manage apps okay so that's our app manager okay so then when it comes to our app builder our lightning app builder this one is specifically and you can also do this with the app manager you can also do this with the app manager and this is where if you remember last thursday um, Michael corrected us, corrected me. Um, he was uh, in class last week. Uh, he corrected me in this aspect. Um, and I, I said this was the wrong thing um, to where you could build apps and uh, you could start building apps in Lightning App Builder, but you can't build apps. But you could build pages. Okay, so when we say pages, what do I mean? Like a record page or a home page. Home page. An app page, right? Okay, so then that's what we build with our Lightning App Builder. The reason why I um, we're, we're just covering this again because it's extremely easy because we have our app menu, app manager, app builder, app launcher to confuse these, right? And this, it confused me. And I know I, um, uh, I went ahead and, um, I, I hate saying that, I got, questions wrong on this before. Um, I know I did. And then so that's why I stress on this part right here, knowing app menu 
is visibility. It shows us and we can uh, rearrange it. It gives us visibility of the apps. App Manager builds App Manage apps. App Launcher launches apps, gives us access to the apps, App Exchange. Okay, the Lightning App Builder, which you would think they would actually maybe have a different name for it, you know, but that gives us where we can create home pages, app pages. And we'll take a look at that. We can take a peek at it today, but primarily we're going to take a look at that a little bit more on Thursday um, because that's fairly easy in that aspect. I see some people taking notes here too. So I'll leave that up there for a second. And this is all under, when you go under user setup, when we're under setup, if you put in user interface, you'll be able to access your app menu. You'll be able to access your Lightning App Builder. Of course, how do we access the app launcher? It's also known as the uh, waffle. Nine dots. Yep. yep, the nine dots, the waffle. Okay. And then for the app manager, you actually put in app manager, you know, under the uh, uh, search. Any questions on this one? Nope. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, excellent. So moving forward. Now, I want to make sure. Okay, good. Yep. Moving forward. Now we're going to look into our data model. OK, so when we're looking into our data model, we're going into our master detail relationship and our lookup relationships. This data model is very important. Now, of these two right here, of these two, which one do you think is the most common? So I'm assuming. <laughs> Look up, exactly. Uh, that look up is the most common. And we're going to go into the schema builder today. We're going to go into the dev org and we're going to go into the schema builder. And you're going to actually be very surprised how common the look up is. And there's a good reason why the look up is extremely common versus the master detail. Okay. Because the master detail essentially locks objects down. And you'll see what we're talking about when we say that. At least it locks the child object down, okay? And you'll see what I'm talking about when I say this. It controls because now we're talking about parent child object when we're talking about that. But let's take a look. So, and there's gonna be sometimes, and this is when, when, when we say data model, because sometimes when you hear that data model, you're thinking, okay, wow, this, get, this is getting really complex. And um, it's not as complex as you think it is. Um, it just sounds like it can be that way, okay? Um, and when we go to our schema builder, it's gonna sound, it's gonna, it's, it, when you look at it, it's gonna look very complex. But that's why one of the reasons why uh, I decided to originally have some of these study groups is because early on when I started studying Salesforce, I was like, wow, how can I break this down as a teacher to the easiest way possible, right? To be able to help other people, not only help myself, but help other people, okay? So looking at right here for the master detail, it tightly relates two objects together. And then that's why I say a master detail, for one, it's not as common, but it's locking that child object down or any child relationship down, unlike the lookup. And you have a limited relationship, one-to-one -one relationship, one-to-many relationship, and a many-many to relationship. Now, what do I mean when I say this? One to one, one to many, and many to many, because that can sound confusing.
it's like if you take an example of uh, a classroom and in one classroom there can be multiple students right so uh, they can only be students can be only in one class or one school right so that will be one to many right okay so we have um all right so yep so we have one classroom right yeah okay and many students can have uh, student can have different subjects would that be many to uh... okay so then yeah let's take a look at this way so then now we have um let's say and we'll use this as an example of one student right yeah okay so then we could say that this student right has a relationship with this classroom yeah okay so then that's a one-to-one -one relationship Okay, because now let's think about it this way. Let's think about it this way. When you're in elementary school or primary yeah. school, you only have one classroom. Yeah. Right? You have yeah. one classroom, you have one teacher. You don't change classes. Yes. That's a one-to-one -one relationship. Okay. But what about the classroom can have multiple students? What the, wouldn't that be now, uh, one too you've, many? Now you, go, you finished class, right? Okay. Yeah. Now you finished elementary or you finished primary school. So now you have from there multiple classrooms. Okay. But inside that classroom, you also have a teacher. And every, in each one of those uh, classrooms, you have a teacher, right? Okay. And then each, now the student, uh, of course, you're going to have multiple students. Okay, so then when we take a look at that aspect, these students have multiple classrooms. Each teacher has multiple students, and each uh, um, and each student has multiple. Each classroom has multiple students. Each student has multiple classrooms. Each teacher has multiple students. That's a many to many. Many to many, right? You know, so now let's say that this teacher only has, only teaches one subject in this one classroom. That's all that teacher t uh, teaches, okay? And then so that teacher will only teach that one subject, doesn't teach anything else, right? Then that teacher could possibly have one to many, right? And then, those, so that's what those relationships mean. One-to-one, -one, many to many, and then one to many. Any questions? And we're gonna see, we're gonna see exactly what that looks like too, okay? So we're gonna definitely take a look at that. Now a lookup, that's a very loose relationship. That is a very, very loose relationship. And the nice thing about a lookup, and see when we think about this, right? When we think about this, because we looked at some of our standard objects already, okay? Just real quick, what are some of the standard objects? Uh, account, mm -hmm. leads, opportunities, uh, case. Yep. Right? Yep. And co contact. Okay, contact. Um, okay, someone else besides Ed Nen. What else are some of the other standard objects? We have, he said, account, case, lead. Contacts. The opportunities. Opportunities. Um, campaign. Yeah. Yep. So yep, products. There we go. Right. So those are some of the standard objects. Some of them that already come built in already have a lookup relationship. Can we already can can we think of just a, a couple of them? And we're gonna we have a slide, but can you already think of some that already have a lookup relationship? Account and contact. Account and contact. Case and contact. Yep, uh, case case of contact. Campaign and opportunity, would that be? Uh, possibly, but um, that doesn't necessarily already have an existing one, um, but it can. Okay. Okay. Um, account um, and opportunity? Um, and uh, account and opportunity, yes. 
and we're, we'll take a look at those. But they, they already have some already existing, and we'll take a look at those, right? And then so in the, one of the other reasons why we need to know these, because those are standard ones. Do we have to, what, so when we create an object, what else do we need to create if we want a relationship? So when we create a custom object, if you want this relationship, you have to create this relationship when you create a custom object. Look up. Yeah, and that's probably gonna be your best bet. And we're about to see why. We're about to see why your best bet's gonna be a lookup. But if I create a custom object, you're gonna wanna create a lookup object. So for instance, um, I have a school, American Academy of Easy English. And then I create an object of students. Now, if I have a student, let's say that's a 12 year old. Now who's paying for now, I created that object for student. Who's paying for those classes? Parents. Okay, so now I need to create what kind of relationship between that object I just created that I'm putting that student in. I need to create what to make sure that it's doing what? Create relationship. I need to create a relationship to another object so in Salesforce, it says this 12 year old that is a student is looking up to another account that someone's paying for, right? So I need to create a lookup relationship. So when I create my custom objects, if you want it to look up to another object, you need to create that relationship because it links together so users can re see related items. So when you're in Salesforce, and you see that related items box, this is how we see them together. It's because of these. It's either because of a master detail or a lookup. And we'll take a look at that. Am I confusing anyone? Any questions so far? Nope. Nope, okay, all right. Now, Here's the significant differences. This is important. So remember with Salesforce, you always want to remember the difference, the significant differences, and many times what things can't do, right? What things can't do. So master detail, the field and the child is mandatory and the master detail. And lookups, they're optional. Can you make the lookups mandatory? Can you make them required? If you want to, yeah, why not? Yeah. But when you make a field, a master detail, and it's the child record, it is mandatory. It is a required field. But on lookups, you can you could go in there, you can make it required, you can uncheck it to where it's not required. It, yeah, it's a lookup, that's fine. <clears throat> this relationship cannot be changed. It cannot be changed. The only way to do it is one way there's only one way to do it and we'll set title there's, there's an option isn't it there's an option you have to enable uh something i think allow something i don't remember the name of that i think you have to assign a different parent to that child so you can change the relationship okay um so okay now 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 we're talking about something we're talking about something a little different right there okay <clears throat> so um, uh, th that is something a little different and that is something I may have to get back with you on right there. Um, because I know what you're talking about and we may have to, uh, take a look at that. And that is something I may owe you on Thursday. 
because I do remember seeing something on that one. But remember, I get all this information from help.salesforce.com. And this is specifically right out of there that the relationship can't be changed. But I do remember seeing something what you're talking about, Ed, and, and I'll get back with you on that one. Because on lookups, yes, the relationship can be changed. And I want to make sure that we're not confusing that. Okay. Because on the master detail, you cannot change a relationship. But you can delete a child. But if you delete the parent, it will delete the child. That is one thing that's important to know. If you delete the parent in a master detail, it will delete all information below it. So that is one thing that you have to be careful of and you have to be aware of. So when you create a child-parent relationship, a master detail relationship, you want to make sure that you are preserving your data before you delete a parent account. Okay. Parent records cannot be removed from the page layout. And child inherits security from parent. And we're going to take a look at that also when it comes to the organization-wide defaults. I thought that's what we were going to work on today. But then as I was uh, uh, working on a separate app, um, I don't know if you all know, I also do a thing called Builder Bytes on Saturdays. I'm working on a separate app. I'm actually building my whole organization um, on Saturdays, and <clears throat> uh, I'm presenting that. I'm actually working with Jade Long on that, and, uh, um, and so everybody's more than welcome to join, you know, but uh, that's something that I'm working on separately on Saturdays you know, uh, which is actually very unique, uh, some very interesting challenges there, you know, but I present that on Saturdays, you know, so um, yeah, you could definitely see a lot of my incompetencies on that day. <laughs> I like to say that there, but uh, um, it's a lot of fun, uh, a lot of fun, a lot of things that I'm learning there. But, um, uh, and then on lookup, child does not inherit securities. A child definitely doesn't. Um, by the way, one of my goals on a side note this week is to create um, uh, a study group. I, I, okay, let me try to say it this way. A study with Stephen study group, study Salesforce with Stephen study group on LinkedIn. So then I can upload all these slides into that group, if you will. So then if you're a member of that group, then you could download all these slides, you know, so that way it's a little bit more organized, you know, um, uh, type thing right there. Um, any questions on this one? Nope. Okay, good. All right. As we're continuing. Oh, you know what? Uh, I did not get rid of the animations. I forgot to get rid of the animations here. Okay, good. So as we're continuing to move forward here, um, now, with this one, this shows us our um, relationship model that we were talking about previously. These are our standard objects, okay? So <clears throat> with these, what kind of relationship do we see here? One to many? Yep, one to many, exactly. And this is our simple lookup relationship, right? This is a lookup relationship, but this is a one to many. And when we say this is uh, our, what kind of objects are these? Uh, standard objects. Standard? Standard objects. Yeah, these are our standard objects. You know, and so I also added this aspect in here because um, campaign member is not necessarily a standard object. Um, if I remember correctly, it's not a standard object um, uh, because those are just users. Those are just users, right, um, that we put inside here. And but we are going to have a one to many relationship here. Because your users are they're going to have access to your leads. They're going to have access to your campaigns, you know, and then and I forgot to add this. I was having a complicated day. Um, um, and yes, then, then there's also a relationship that goes this way. I forgot to add that way. Um, this relationship here. But this is an excellent example of one to many. 
Um, go ahead, Katrina. So your case for the arrow is actually from case to contact, not contact to case. Case is looking up to contact. So the arrow should be on the other side, if you see what I'm saying. You see, go down to case. The, yep, the yep you're talking about, bottom. yeah, you're talking about right yeah. here. Yeah, the, the arrow should go up to the contact because case is looking up to contact. So you're saying I have this backwards right here? Yeah. Okay. It, 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 the arrow should go up to contact from case going to contact. From case to contact. Okay, so you're saying I have that backwards? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's just, the lookup relationship for yep. that. I want to, okay, thank you for that. I want to double check something here real quick. Um, I'm pretty sure you are right there. I'm going to double check um, because I was having a rough day. I was having a really rough day, not going to lie, when I went ahead and uh, built these up today. And then, um, and uh, actually from what I have right here, it's actually showing that um, that I have it correct, but let's go ahead and double check this. Um, from do you do you see? Can you guys see? I uh, know you can't see this, so let's go ahead and double check this. And matter of fact, let me share the slide um, because I also use for one of my sources, and I double check these with um, this, let's, where is the button here? Let's stop sharing and let's jump over here. So contact a case. Do you see this right here? Yeah, I see what you're saying. I see what you're yeah. saying. I'm not I'm so, not saying that I'm not saying that you wrong. I'm just saying that it, So then maybe maybe the let, tile relationship is going up to contact. Well, you know remember, like when you have a case, you have to connect a So remember this is just a lookup. No, but go ahead, Katrina. Let's let's talk this through. Yeah, definitely. Because this is good. Let's talk this through. Okay, no, I'm I'm done. I don't have anything else to add. That's oh, okay. all I have in my head. <laughs> well, yeah, no, no, no problem. That's no problem because so if we we take a look at this, right? Because if we if, have a even contact, I go con even I go confused. I thought uh, Katrina was right uh, because yep. it make more sense to that case is looking up to uh, to to the contact that you create a case and then you have a contact. So okay, so let's let's take a look at this, right? Okay, so we have an account. So let's go ahead and take a look at for one account. So we're gonna use this on one account, right? So we take a look at the account, okay? So then the account is gonna go ahead and look up into, we need to find out who the person is for, who's the contact person for that account, right? I don't think in this term, it's not a look up. This is, it, this is a look, there's no such thing as look down. But it, this exactly. one is on the related in the related detail um, list, right? So in an account under related, there's different information. But as far as I know, case is looking up. Yep. Okay. I, I see what you're talking so about. So contact, then contact opportunity and case is looking up to an account. Exactly. Okay. Okay. So yeah, yeah, you're right. So then we're we're taking a look at this, and then so I have the arrows essentially going in the wrong direction. So essentially, but in, in this aspect, they're going in the right direction, but they're going in the wrong direction. And you'll see why they're going in the right direction. And when we get to the schema builder, because on PowerPoint, you can't really do the same thing you could do on schema builder. Because on schema builder, the way it looks is like this. Yes, that's very true. Yes. And then that's why, that's like why that. it looks like this. Okay. That's exactly why it looks like this, which can be confusing because these are lookup relationships. And then that's why these arrows are like this, because that's the best way to resemble it according to schema builder.
And then that's why it could be confusing. Excellent point. And I am going to make a note of that because I know how to actually make a copy and put it in here. to prevent confusion. Thank you very much. Great, great information right here. I'm gonna pull out my pen and highlight this. Because what I'm doing here is I'm also building up a database of these slides, you know, so that way they could be better for the future, create them better. Because yeah, you're right, that is confusing. That is very confusing. Thank you very much. That's awesome. I like it, I like it. Okay, good. Now. As we take a look at this, which this could be also confusing. And if it is, please let me know. Please let me know. Because now we're looking at, and this is going to show us, the green is a lookup relationship. Okay. And the red, and I've used this once before, and it was kind of difficult to explain previously. Um, but I decided we're about to jump over into the schema builder. OK, we're about to jump over into the dev work. Now, this is uh, an example and trying to find some other examples. I found some over in the schema builder, which are which it's easier to explain there. But a little bit more difficult, if that makes sense. So here is um, a better example of our master detail relationship. Let me put that there. OK, so. When we take a look here, the and I think this is red. I, I think the ID is red. I'm not sure it, it's red or peach, one of those colors. Okay. So with our master ID relationship, when we take a look at here under the account, it comes down under our transaction, our balance, and I'm not sure what that one's supposed to be, but now these are child objects. The account is a parent object. And these are child objects. Knowing this, obviously, can we delete the account object? No, no we can't. Why? Because then. Uh the transaction balance, they will be deleted as well. Okay, if if it was possible to delete the account object, then yes, that would be true. But why can't we delete the account object? Is this because it's standard object? Because it's a standard object, right? So, but let's pretend that this wasn't an account object. Let's pretend it was a custom object. Then yes, it would be feasible to delete that object, right? You know, so if this was a custom object, so if you saw under there, like on there, this, you know, um, underscore C, then we know it's a custom object. Okay. Then it was possible to delete this. Um, uh, then yes, we would delete this information here as well. What else do we know about our child objects here or child fields? What, do we, what else do we know about them? They are dependent on the parent. They are, yep, 100% dependent on the parent. Okay. And uh, I think we cannot leave them orphan. So if the parent goes, then the children goes. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And the, does that, is that a true for standard in customized objects? Yeah, that is true in customized objects. So if you delete okay. a customized object, those objects would disappear as well. Those objects will disappear. Now, um, but also these are mandatory. So when a user is inputting information, you have to fill these out. You have to fill these out. They are mandatory. You do not have an option as a system administrator to, uh, the, these are required, um, fields that you have to fill in. They are required. You know, now here with lookups, that's not necessary. That is not necessary. Now, before we jump over to Schema Builder, Schema Builder may help a little bit or it may really confuse you. Does this help? 
Yep. Okay. Because I know with me, I was seriously confused when um, it came to the master detail relationship and lookup relationship. It took me some time to really get this down. So, okay. Um, and then I do believe, yep, that was my last slide right there. Okay. Um, okay. So then let me jump over into... Um, and there is my dev org right here. Let's open up the dev org. Excellent. And I still have it up. It didn't close that on me. I was, I was hoping it didn't time out. All right. So now going into our schema builder. So let's just jump back over here into our home. And then as we're here, how do I get to, so Let's do a little bit of a refresh. We have a little bit. Um, how do I get to the schema builder? Type in schema builder in the quick find. <laughs> okay, yes. What's actually a shorter way? Uh, I've been saying this a few times. What's a shorter way I could do this? Just put this A, B. Yep, yep. exactly, A, B. Yep. Do you remember that, Katrina? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, I, I thought... I thought you were saying like a click somewhere. I'm like, I don't remember uh, any click. Yeah, okay. no, I know. But yeah, no, ever since, uh, um, I can't remember her name, ever since she's taught us that, I love that. I use that shortcut all the time. Schema builder. But yeah, exactly. Here we go. So now, time to see something absolutely 100% scary. So when I say this, so right now, this doesn't look too bad. So as we see, everything starting to look. So, uh, because I have everything, I have everything selected right now. So when, so if we see, so if you, we take a look right here, what I was talking about, that's, that's reflecting a one to a mini lookup object. Okay. Now you see, we can't create that. That's actually difficult. I actually, uh, I think I may know how to do that. In, uh, now that I'm thinking about it, I'm in the process of getting um, PowerPoint certified um, I'm hoping by the end of the week, I'll take that certification, but I think I may know how to do that one. Um, anyway, um, but let's take a look right down here. What, what is this right here? Does anybody know? It's your whole map of objects from the, uh, selection window on the left. Yes, it is. It is. So let's zoom out. And all I'm doing is using the scroll on my mouse. And then, of course, you can use this right here, too, as well. And obviously, we could take these. <coughs> For instance, I could pull, take my user. Excuse me. And I can move my user anywhere that I want. And you take a look at those. Look how many things are connected to the user. And if I want, I just take my mouse and it tells me exactly what kind of relationships they're connected to. As I just move along, as I just move around them. And so I can just move everything around. Now, there's another option I can use to uh, move, move everything around. I could clear everything off. Let's take a look at our account. All right, now, what else do we wanna take a look at? Macro, what is that object? Can you so, put that in there so we sure. can talk about it? Okay, I'm glad that you said that. So macro, and then now we see how far apart they are. What did I just do? Just go ahead. Made the layout simplified. Just exactly. I clicked on this auto layout and it just organized it for me. So a macro, Katrina, is something that you use for repetitive, uh, repetitive tasks. That's what uh, a macro is. Um, and that's something that you can uh, create for repetitive tasks. It's on the test, guys. It's on the test. 
It is. <laughs> <laughs> so let's let's add something else. So how about contact? Okay. Auto layout. We can scroll down a little bit. We can move this around. And hey, let's take a look at this. What kind of relationship? Up, oh, I kind of gave it away. Okay, I should use my other pointer. Um, up, oh, I'm sorry, I ignored the chat. Um, okay, yep, I, uh, I need to keep my chat box open. I'm kind of in the process of getting used to. It. I'll keep my chat box open so I don't uh, miss any uh, text there. Okay, again, we see that's a look up uh, a relationship. Um, someone, someone else, give me another object to pull in. Let's go with some of the standard ones like uh, opportunity. Opportunity. Yeah, campaign, case, contact. Let's see that relationship. Case. Um, let's see here. What else? Let's go ahead and pull up our auto layout there. Let's get these all a little closer. Do we see any different colors? If you see a different color, please let me know. Yep. You do see a different color? On account. On account. Okay. So um, let me change my color here. Are you talking about yeah. Where you this one right here? Yeah. Okay. So then what color is that one? For me, it looks like purple. Because what's the legend say? Master detail. Master. All right, let's take a look at it. It's a hierarchy from account to account. Okay. And then, um, so right here, because yeah, it's for with me, I'm again, I'll mention I am colorblind. Um, so a lot of colors I can't see. To me, that looks like it's uh, just more of a, a black one. But um, especially when these lines get really small, it's very difficult for me to see colors. So then um, uh, let's hear, what was another one? Campaign. Do we already put campaign on there? Uh, let's find out. Let's do another auto layout. Let's uh, get rid of this. Um, let's it's right there to the right. Right there to the right. Okay. Campaign yep. Is connected opportunity. Yep. Let's move it down here. There was one that I saw that I found earlier. Um, I'm trying to remember. Let's go ahead and go back to our A's. Um, uh, let's go to our authorization. It's interesting how it does this. Or left, all the way up the left authorization next to micro uh, macro. Okay, there's the authorization form. Then let's go into authorization consent. Um, there was another one. Uh, there was, ah, there we go. That's what I was looking for. Because there is a different color right here. Yep. Um, what color is that one? Probably Open. master detail relationship. Yep. Yep, master detail relationship. So let's move these. Let's move this one down a little bit. And let's find out what's going on here. Let's click auto layout. There we go. So interesting. Let's, let's take a look at these two. Let's zoom in on these two. And now we can see a little bit of better information on our relationships here. Okay, so what form do we have here? Authorization. Authorization form of a text, right? Okay. And then we have authorization form, form. and then um, authorization form uh, data so, use, right? Okay, so which one is the parent? Authorization form. The middle one. Yep, exactly. The middle one. The middle one is the parent. 
So if we deleted now, um, let me ask you this. Um, let me get rid of this. Let's get that out of the way. Um, so if now, oh, here's something else that's pretty cool about Schema Builder. Can I change this form? Can I change this uh, um, this object? Is it standard or is it custom? Custom. Let me move this right here. Let's 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 take a look at the subject. When you mean change it, does it mean do you mean like a data type, a name of the object, or what do you mean when you say change? So change so that? now we're taking a look at this uh, this form, right? So we're now taking a look at this uh, object. So this is a complete object. So when we have this here, this is an object, right? So when we have this here, now when I said, can we change this? I went, clicked right here. And then we clicked view object or we can hide the object on the canvas. Now, so can I change? So let me rephrase the question. That was a good question, Marie, thank you. So when I look at this, can I click on any of this information and edit any, any of the fields inside this object? No. So, um, no, I can't. I can't come in here, but I can hop right over here and then I could come in and I can now, um, mm -hmm. I could come in here and I can start taking a look at doing what? Changing the relationships. Um, well, or I can start adding new. I mean, because now we're just right oh, inside the object. Know. Yeah, we're, we're, we're just right inside the object right here. So not only do we look at everything, um, because this is a um, master detail relationship, remember? Because once we have our master detail relationship, can we change a relationship? No, you said no. No, we cannot change that. We cannot change a relationship. We cannot change that. So any questions so far coming from this? Now here's a question coming about from the schema builder, right? Can I create a new object? Yeah, you should be able to. Yeah, pretty cool, huh? Mm -hmm. Yep, and then I can come in here. Not only can I create a new object, but I could come in here, create a new object. After I create a new object, can I add fields into it? Yeah. Yep, I could add fields. I can uh, do pretty much anything I want from object manager, almost. Um, uh, and I just went ahead and lost my schema builder. My question <laughs> about the schema builder. Go ahead. Um, so does that mean that, for example, for existing objects, whether it is parent or children, we are not we are not able to modify anything through the schema builder, and we are only able to create new objects and you know do the normal thing for the new object. So then, um, and because that's not necessarily the purpose of the schema builder. Oh, okay. Um, the schema yes. builder is to help us look at our data model. Okay. So and 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 so that that's that's the main purpose of our schema builder. And so and so let's go back into um, so why do we want to better understand our data model? Okay. Let's take a look into. Let's go back over here, and let's go home, and let's go into. Does anybody remember the name of where, where do we need to go if we want to look at the app we were building? So on Thursday, we started go building. Up. Go to setup. Okay, so we're in setup. Oh, yeah. you're already in setup. Oh, uh, what is it? Device? Something device. App manager. App manager. App Good. Manager. App manager. All right. So now we're in app manager. Okay, so um, uh, let's see here. And tip agency, that's the one we're in, right? 
Okay, so um, before I can completely give everything away right here, um, how do I, how do we access our, this is our app, Temp Agency. How do we get into our Temp Agency to take a look uh, at um, what we may want to edit? Click on the arrow on the right hand side. Okay, so let's come in, yeah. jump in here and let's edit. Yeah. Or you know what? There is uh, there is actually an easier way to get to where I wanted to do um, what I wanted to do. So let's just jump right here and let's go into temp agency. Let's go into our schema builder. Let's take a look at our objects. We have accounts, contacts, opportunities, chatter, reports. So we're in our schema builder. Let's go to our objects. Let's clear all. We have our accounts, contact, opportunities. What else was there? Anybody else remember off the top of their head? Chatter. Chatter. Okay. Um, Okay, so chatter's not there on the schema builder, understandable. Um, uh, reports, dashboards. Oh, files, I think that was on there. Yep, okay, so report, dashboards. Okay, that's understandable. Files, okay, nope, okay. Because that's really not, uh, uh, employees, good. Okay, employees, excellent. Okay, employee, good. So now let's go to our auto layout. So now when we look here, we already have some of our basic objects that we'll use for our app that we started building, right? This is what we need to start taking a look at when we have our app. We have our four um, objects that are going to store information essentially that we will use and that we have in our temp agency. Because now that we have our employee here, what do you think we're going to need to add for our employee? An account. Relationships. Say again. Relationships. Exactly. We're going to probably need to add a relationship, right? And what relationship should we add? Account. Yeah. What kind of relationship do you think we should add to the account? Uh Lookup? Yeah, I would definitely add a lookup relationship to the account, yeah. you know? And so this is actually something when we're looking at our data model. And one thing that I, I learned um, also when we take a look at as we are building our temp agency, as we're going through these next few weeks, we also want to take a look at when we're writing down something I did for the American Academy app is I actually started writing down on paper, what objects do you want? What fields do you want? You know, so that's something we're going to also take a look at. What do we want? So then you just build and you throw them in there. You know, so we build them, we throw them in there, and then that way it's easier to put it on there. And then you <coughs> uh, build that relationship. So under um, employee, so if we come in here, Let's see, let's see, we have just a couple of minutes. Let's see about doing this. So if we do this and we put in a lookup relationship. Excuse me, I'm sorry. What should be the field, field label? Would it be relationship? Well, no, so this is gonna be, remember, this is gonna be a field inside the object employee hmm. that's going to look up to the account right so you're gonna can you call it account um well we can call it an account but okay. what's the purpose because mm -hmm. remember so we started building this app and these are employees that we're trying to help find jobs right mm -hmm. So what's the purpose of them? So what's the purpose of connecting them to the account? It'd be a hookup. 
count ID, then a count ID because we need to identify them with some kind of ID. Okay. Um, so I mean, we um, could put we could put it down that way. Let's take let's take a little bit of a closer look. Let me uh, zoom in here. So we have our employee name, our employee type, which is a pick list, first name. Are they placed in a job? So yes. if we're if we're taking a look into an account, now maybe the accounts are the um, businesses that we're pl placing these employees in, right? Yep. Okay. So if we're going to put in a lookup relationship, so then um, maybe we could put this as um, placement or um, placement account. What do you guys think? I think so. It makes more sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, uh, company, um, the employee is placed with. And then what is something that we always, always, always want to do? Add a description. Description and help text, right? And then now we do um, related to um, account. account. All right, child relationship name, employees, related list label, employees. Do y'all think that looks good? Mm -hmm. I think it looks good, so let's click save. And there we go. Now we have a lookup relationship. And then so now we have a relationship. So if, when we go to, let's jump back over here. <clears throat> let's refresh. Ah, I should have asked you guys that. <laughs> and now it's just become a habit. So if I come over under employee, and we haven't put in an employee yet, but once we do put an employee and I click on here, or let me click down on the accounts, let's go ahead and go into, let's say Gene Point. And then we come down here, we see cases. Um, let's see, because we're under our related. Because remember we we're talking about this related tab is showing what's um, under, what's gonna be uh, under the lookups, right? So we know contacts are actually related. That has a lookup relationship. Opportunities has a lookup relationship to contacts. Cases has a lookup relationship. Notes, partners, and and maybe because we haven't added it to the page layout, we can't see it yet. And maybe that's the case, but that's something that we could definitely explore further on Thursday um, because we're going to need to um, uh, populate this. So any questions so far, because we're going to create some more objects on Thursday, we're going to get our hands a little bit more dirtier in our app. And then um, we're going to explore a little bit more. We're going to look more into the uh, lightning app builder because when we come into our temp agency, right? So then if I come back in here to our temp agency, do we have a home page? Mm. We don't have a home page, do we? Mm -hmm. Nope. So we need to create ourselves a home page. So we need to create ourselves a home page. We want to take a look at also record types. Record types is also part of um, our um, object manager. Record types are actually fairly easy. You know, so we'll be able to take a look at record types. Again, record types is something we've already talked about once about the org wide. And now we're going to start taking a look at org wide and for specific apps too. You know, so any questions? I know some of you probably need to. Um, is there an ask me anything for uh, Maravis tonight? Oh, there isn't? No, it'll be on Thursday, right okay. after your session. 
Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's on Thursday. Okay. Yeah. I forgot because, um, yeah, it's on Thursday. All right. Um, uh, it's been that kind of a day for me today. So, um, I was thinking, well, man, it was going to be tonight. Okay. But, um, excellent. Um, well, I hope I helped you all tonight. Um, I hope I gave you guys some kind of value. Um, and then, uh, if you guys don't have any questions, I hope everybody has a good evening. You too, man. Appreciate you. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Thanks, you very students. much. Thanks. Bye -bye. And I'll see everybody on Thursday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. I'll see everybody later. Bye-bye now.